Next, from South Florida's night team, a governor's demand, now lawmakers delivering, and your hurricane insurance rates could soon be going down. We're live in Tallahassee. A chiropractor's final moments before he's murdered. And tonight, the surveillance video you saw, first on 7. Students accused of a computer caper, and the cameras are rolling. American troops targeted in Baghdad in a tape from Al-Qaeda mocking a possible U.S. surge. An NFL quarterback cleared. A heat player busted on the beach. A ship in trouble at sea, cargo going overboard, and people on shore helping themselves. Paris Hilton facing a judge, now facing her punishment. And you look like one of those creatures that live in the jungle with those massive eyes. And are idol judges meaner than ever before? Oh, hey everybody, I'm Belkis Nare. I'm Craig Stevens, all this and more right here, first at 10. Live from the news station, this is 7 News at 10. When you work together to do what's right, anything can happen. He promised relief, and now Florida's governor says we're going to get it, all thanks to a new hurricane insurance bill just passed by state lawmakers. That means the rate debate is over, at least for now. Hello again, everyone. Not everybody in Tallahassee is convinced, though, that this bill does enough. The next move is the governor's. Let's head live to the state capitol now. The night team's Dave Cartoonin with more on all this. Dave? Craig, as you mentioned, the only thing that this grueling seven-day special session still needs is Governor Christ's signature at the bottom of this sweeping bill. The clerk will unlock the machine and the members will proceed to vote. With just two no votes, members of the Florida House of Representatives approved a massive insurance bill Monday they hope will deliver relief to Florida homeowners with soaring wind insurance rates. 40 A's, zero nays, Mr. President. The Senate wasted no time following suit without a single vote in dissent. The 50-page bill, only completed after a grueling week-long special session, will establish a new government super catastrophe fund made up of $32 billion of public money that would be used to provide cheap backup insurance to private companies. Lawmakers believe that would give high-risk South Florida homeowners with private windstorm insurance an average rate reduction of 30%. It's like that patient that was hemorrhaging. We've stabilized the patient. Uh, we now have a state, uh, you know, a patient that is not bleeding anymore, and from here on out, the healing process begins. But customers of Citizens Insurance, the government insurer of last resort, can expect just an average of 15 percent reduction off their 2006 bill, with no new increases this year. With more than 400,000 Citizens customers in South Florida, many local lawmakers believe the new law may bring a reduction, but not relief. You're in the Citizens uh, risk pool. You need a lot more than this bill is doing to say that it's uh, it's true relief. You're rates are so high right now that uh, more needs to be done. I just believe that we could have done a lot better. Well, this is a step in the right direction. That's all this is. This is not the panacea. This is not the this is not uh, the fix all. And frankly, I'm very disappointed that this bill didn't go further. The bill now goes to Governor Charlie Crist, who all but said Monday afternoon that he'd sign the bill. We are going to lower rates in a meaningful way and it's going to actually happen. This is a great beginning. This is a great start. It's exactly what the people of Florida expected us to do. So by law, the governor has 14 days to sign this bill, but he could sign it as early as tomorrow afternoon. But all of this comes with a huge caveat. Most lawmakers agree that all of this work will be rendered useless if Florida is hit by even a moderate sized storm this year. We're live in Tallahassee tonight. Dave Cartoon in 7 News 19. You saw it first on 7. Surveillance video as a doctor is shot to death outside a South Florida restaurant. Now police want your help to find the killers. The night team's Rosh Lowe is live in North Miami Beach. He has more now. Rosh? Belkis, the one thing about this case, police are being extremely proactive. They realize that a killer is out there. So today, another example. Here at the North Miami Beach Police Department, detectives releasing yet another piece of evidence in the pursuit of justice. They want our viewers to step forward if they have any pertinent information. 
Anton Tim stands in front of his television watching the surveillance video Seven News first aired. It is video of his son's last seconds on this earth, his son Bradley Tim's car careening to a stop, his family hoping the release of this video will generate leads in Brad's murder. I, I'm hoping that, you know, the video, there was a ton of people there, you can see in the parking lot, um, that somebody will just come forward. Somebody must know something. Somebody must have seen something. All right, here comes uh, Brad. You can see how tall he is there. And he's walking out from the restaurant, uh, walking into the parking lot. It is the first time we are seeing surveillance video of the night Dr. Bradley Timp was murdered in December. He walks out of the Houston's restaurant in North Miami Beach, gets into his Cadillac. By this time, the whole incident is over. So you think he's dying now in that car? Uh, it, he's shot already. And he stops, uh, probably realizing that he's hurt. And then you're going to see the car lurch forward. And the car is going to crash into some parked cars that are uh, parked in the front of the business. You can see here people rushing out of the Houston's restaurant. They think there's been a car accident. They rush over to Brad's car. It is too late. Timp is dead. Timp played basketball for the University of Miami. He was a successful chiropractor. The motive for his murder thought to be a carjacking. In releasing the video, uh, I'm hoping that it'll jar somebody's memory uh, so that Perhaps they, that, that video, by seeing that video, it will let them know to, to come forward or they can, they can remember a car leaving or seeing somebody running or anything. I could visualize him in the car and, and I'm sure he was, uh, probably knew he was hurt pretty badly to the point where he was trying to get help. And uh, it's very sad. So any information here, North Miami Beach Police, they want to hear from you. 305-949-5500 is your number. Remember here, there is a $30,000 reward. The FBI also assisting with this investigation. We are live tonight in North Miami Beach. Rosh Lowe, 7 News 19. All right, Rosh, thanks. A brutal beating caught on camera. Five juveniles seen beating a man back in December and videotaping the whole incident. Cops arresting four of the suspects who allegedly confessed to this crime. The assault taking place in an alley along the 4100 block of Northwest 12th Street in Lauderhill. Cops say that man was homeless and they have yet to find him. Tonight team now in Southwest Miami-Dade where police say they have shut down an illegal dental practice. An anonymous tip leading them to a home along Southwest 71st Street where they found a full setup of dental equipment. The suspect, identified as Osamni Herrera, arrested there tonight. He's facing charges of practicing without a license. Hazmat crews called out to a stinky situation in Kendall. Residents complaining of a strong stench at the Dadeland Apartments on Southwest 77th Avenue. Officials say the foul odor was due to a solvent used to remove carpeting. The complex ruled safe now, and residents have since been let back into their homes. A wheelchair-bound man recovering in the hospital tonight. Flames breaking out at his apartment along the 100 block of Southwest 11th Avenue in Fort Lauderdale. A quick-thinking neighbor rescuing the man who was taken to Broward General Medical Center with burns and difficulty breathing. A crime caught on camera, and at police say they've caught the culprits behind a computer caper. The pair seen on this surveillance tape, charged with stealing about $50,000 worth of computer equipment. Laptops there were meant for students at Sheridan Technical Center, but Hollywood police believe a 17-year-old classmate, along with an accomplice, are the suspects on that tape. Both were arrested last week. The robbery, as you might imagine, shocking people across that campus. I can't believe someone would do something like that. Because honestly, we, we need those laptops and we need computers to learn. We know that they were sold on the streets here in Broward County. So if someone has a friend, someone has a relative who purchased one of these, and if we find you, we will arrest you. You'll be easy to find, too, because police say most of the equipment still has the school logo branded on it. One of the suspects remains in jail tonight. Two middle school students arrested for vandalizing West Glades Middle School back in December. The 13- and 14-year-old boys caught on surveillance tape carrying cans of spray paint 
and vandalizing the property. They are now charged with felony counts of burglary and criminal mischief for damaging the building. Police say both have confessed and both have been released and are in their parents' custody. A deadly attack targeting troops, a Black Hawk helicopter shot down, and twin car bombs claiming nearly 100 lives. And then there is this, Al-Qaeda's second in command, challenging troops and President Bush's plan to send more soldiers to Iraq. With all these details, the night team's Tom Haynes joins us from the Satellite Center. Now, Tom? Craig and Belkis with death and violence breaking one record after another inside Iraq. The president will have the world's full attention when he delivers his State of the Union address just hours from now. Sirens pierce the air on the streets of Baghdad. The dying and wounded are rushed to area hospitals. Two suicide bombers detonate 400 pounds of explosives in a popular Shiite shopping area. Those who did this are not men. No, they are not. A man is judged by his actions, but they are not men. Each of the bombs packed with nails and shrapnel to inflict maximum casualties. At least 88 people are killed, 150 others wounded. Military analysts say insurgents are striking an unprecedented blow before 20,000 additional U.S. troops arrive. Clearly what they see is, a, is an opportunity, if you will, to create as much havoc as they can before they have to start dealing with American forces walking the streets of Baghdad. The violence follows a bloody weekend for U.S. forces. Hostile fire reportedly downed a Black Hawk helicopter, killing 12 troops northeast of Baghdad. Also in Iraq, five U.S. soldiers were killed by armed militants dressed as members of the U.S. military. As the president prepares his State of the Union speech, al-Qaeda's second-in-command makes his own, ridiculing the administration's plan for a troop increase, saying it will not lead to peace. And the president is feeling heat from members of his own party. One senator is demanding he report to Congress every 30 days on the progress of the war in Iraq. Others are against the so-called troop surge. Don't expect to hear too much on Iraq tomorrow night during the president's State of the Union speech. The White House says the president will focus on domestic issues. Live in the Newsplex, Tom Haynes, 7 News 19. Well, Tom, a little bit of Iraq, much more on domestic issues and so on. You'll be able to watch the president's speech, the State of the Union Address, tomorrow night at 9, right here on Channel 7. The Justice Department saying the FBI is partly to blame in the Mark Foley sex scandal. An internal report concluding the agency should have done more to protect teenage house pages. This after officials learned of salacious and inappropriate messages the Republican congressman sent to interns. Foley resigned last September after the emails surfaced. A star NFL quarterback cleared of wrongdoing when a water bottle he tried to bring aboard a flight at MIA appeared to be caked in marijuana residue. My team is Joel Brown, live for us with the update. Joel? Craig, well, if this story has done anything, it's bring a lot of attention to these uh, secret stash water bottles. But the news from Miami-Dade police tonight is that whatever it was inside Michael Vick's bottle was not marijuana. Michael Vick's lightning fast moment of MIA controversy comes to a screeching halt. Look at him fly, Michael Vick. The Atlanta Falcons quarterback making headlines since last Wednesday's incident at an MIA security checkpoint. Vick refusing to throw out his water bottle, a bottle later determined to have a built in secret compartment and a residue police say smelled of marijuana. Now, the water bottle's wave of bad publicity drowned out by the test results. ESPN.com first reports that Vick will be exonerated. Then, this from Miami Dade State Attorney the crime lab's test on the bottle turned up no drug found. TSA defending its handling of the high-profile incident. We do have to check into any behavior that could seem suspicious, and there was suspicious, suspicious behavior on his part in that he did not want to part with what seemed to be a simple water bottle. Vic's $130 million contract makes him the NFL's top paid player, releasing this statement through his attorney, quote, Michael fully understands that his actions on and off the field are a reflection on the Atlanta Falcons and the NFL, end quote. That reputation certainly helped by those negative test results and a guarantee from the state attorney no charges will be filed. Michael Vick. 
So we may never know what it was inside Michael Vick's water bottle, but it was not drugs. Michael Vick, meantime, eager to get the whole incident behind him and start talking about football again. We're live at MIA tonight. Joel Brown, 7 News, 19. All right, Joel, and from you and the star story of the football star to a Miami Heat player busted on the beach tonight, reaction from the team's president. Yeah. Steve Shapiro, live in the Plex. What's up, Steve? I should mention that Pat Riley told the players not to comment on Robert Height's arrest. The rookie guard was arrested early Sunday morning. He was charged with DUI. Height had been at, at teammate Dwayne Wade's birthday party on the beach. He bonded out Sunday afternoon, and he missed Sunday's game against Dallas. And apparently, he won't be back with the Heat for a while. Team President Riley issued this statement today. Robert has uh, personally apologized to me, to the team, to ownership, and to his family. We feel confident that Robert is acutely aware of the seriousness of this incident. Robert and I have mutually agreed that he takes some time away from the team to try and get his personal issues in order. That's from Pat Riley. Tonight, the Heat played the Knicks without Dwayne Wade and without Shaquille O'Neal. I'll have highlights in sports. In the Plex, Steve Shapiro, 7 News, 19. All right, Steve, thanks. Well, still ahead here from the night team, a ship listing at sea and leaking oil, but it's the cargo washing ashore that's creating the stir. More on that ahead. A driver falling asleep at the wheel, and this is the result. And for three frustration days, they denied that the body ever arrived at the morgue. The man never notified his brother was dead. Now he wants answers, and he's calling Help Me Howard with Patrick Frazier. A surprise snow in the desert southwest covering cacti with the white stuff. And Paris Hilton facing a judge. And tonight we know her punishment. We'll share it with you. That's not hot. I'm Louis Aguirre, live in the plague. Some find it hilarious. Others, well, they find it hostile. So is the talent that bad? Or are the idol judges meaner than ever? One contestant is speaking out. I got your idol update that my team is coming back in two. Help for children and families is one call away. Call the Children's Trust at 211. Closed captioning, brought to you by City Furniture, now offering same-day delivery seven days a week. A listing ship leaking dangerous chemicals and sending expensive cargo overboard, much to the delight of scavengers on shore. Treacherous tilt for that ship in distress, drawing droves to the beach, not to witness the rescue of the freighter, but uh, for a scavenger hunt. Sean is set, that's about it. Scavengers by the dozen storming a beach in southwest England, grabbing all they can. A basket and a bowl so far, but lots of Bibles, which is quite sad. The items coming ashore from a cargo ship beached off the southern English coast. The crew stranding the freighter during a violent storm in the English Channel to prevent sinking. 200 of the vessel's containers have gone overboard, and three of them contain hazardous materials like battery acid. But perhaps the biggest concern is the 200 tons of oil the ship has already leaked. I, actually, it, to me, it looks awful. I think it's really sad that we always come down here fishing, and we won't be fishing for a long time, I don't think, so I think it's really sad. Police also patrolling the beach, but that isn't slowing the scavengers who are cracking open the crates and taking off with items like clothing, car parts, even a motorcycle. I came down with my daughter-in-law. She persuaded me to come down this morning, have a look. Rather than recovering the goods, crew members are more concerned with stabilizing the ship and preventing an environmental disaster. Well, once the ship is stabilized, its fuel containers will be drained and the vessel towed to shore. All of this could take up to a week. Off the satellites now, a brush fire burning wild in Southern California, fueled by whipping Santa Ana winds. Over 200 battle-weary firefighters working to tame the fire about 40 miles west of Los Angeles. 20 homes in the line of fire as it spreads over several acres of brush. The blaze broke out just as red flag warnings were posted due to gusty offshore winds and low humidity in that region. A driver asleep at the wheel causing chaos in Connecticut. Look at that. Police say the driver dozed off, accidentally crossing all lanes of oncoming traffic and smashing into a plumbing store in West Haven. The impact so strong, the building was lifted from its foundation. Amazingly, the guy was not hurt. No one was inside the store at the time. 
Moving on now to Arizona, rare snow painting mountains and yards white overnight. I snarled traffic across much of the southeastern part of the state as a winter storm continued to make its way across. The snow won't last, though, because temperatures are slated to reach the 50s by tomorrow. Also tonight, his brother died in the hospital, but no one called him to let him know. Now a South Florida man wants to know why that is. Can Howard help with some answers? Here's the night team's Patrick Frazier. The last few months have been terribly painful for Sergio Gonzalez. I'm the only brother, surviving brother. It's not just that Sergio's brother George died, it's the fact that Sergio didn't know about it for several months. I, 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 I hadn't, I, I was flabbergasted. I, I hadn't, you know, I don't know what to do. George had HIV and towards the end of his life would disappear for months at a time. After not hearing from him for a while, Sergio started looking. So I called one of the pharmacies I would use to get his medication. The pharmacist told him George's prescriptions had been canceled. So Sergio called the hospital where his brother went for treatment. And she said she remembered my brother's name and that she had that he had died August 9, 2005 at 7 o'clock in the morning. And he was sent on the following date, August 10, 2005, to the morgue. Sergio was shocked and went to the medical examiner's office to find out where George had been buried. That's when he was stunned again, when they told him they never got George's body. And I couldn't believe that. I told him that this is not a Latin country where bodies disappear. Eventually, paperwork was tracked down, and Sergio learned his brother had been cremated. They uh, donated him for cremation as an indigent, and that he had no family members. Sergio couldn't believe it. No one had called him from the hospital or the morgue, even though he's listed as the next of kin on his brother's paperwork at the hospital. Next again for emergency contact, my name and my telephone number. Without a body to confirm his brother is dead, Sergio is in limbo, since the death certificate says the body had no scars. Then George had a scar down his chest from open heart surgery. So I don't know if he's alive or dead or what, who had disappeared. Sergio is now tormented. He says he sees people and stops to make sure they're not his brother. But he's also left to wonder, are the ashes at the morgue George's? Please, I need to know, I need to rest. I need to put him to rest. Wondering if everything was handled properly, Sergio called Help Me Howard. Sergio will probably never get a definitive answer if the ashes are his brothers. In this case, both the hospital and the morgue had an obligation to make a reasonable effort to locate the next of kin so they could choose whether to claim the remains. If they tried and failed, then legally they can cremate the body. When Help Me Howard contacted the hospital, they told us they tried to reach Sergio by phone. They say he never answered and didn't have voicemail. In a statement, they told us they have a very aggressive policy for contacting family members. Sergio's response, then why didn't they send him a letter to notify him? He wants to sue. Sergio would have to prove that the hospital and the morgue didn't even attempt to notify him in order to be awarded damages. And to be blunt, it's almost impossible to prove that someone didn't make those phone calls. But Sergio is pulling his phone records to see if there were any incoming calls from the hospital. He says it's unbelievable that all they did was make a couple of calls after his brother died. You know, at this time of age, where we believe in humanity, how can it be so inhumane to do something to a human being like this? Now, Jorge was admitted to the hospital once before. The hospital had the same information they had when he died. That time, they called Sergio right away. The bottom line, if you're having any procedure done and they ask for an emergency contact, don't give them one, give them several. And carry those names in your wallet or purse in case you ever get in an accident. The kind of things you don't want to think about, but you have to. Well, this helped me out. I'm Patrick Frazier, 7 News. Mm. Coming up in a couple of minutes here from the Newsplex as we continue tonight, Paris Hilton will pay for her bad behavior. Our idol judge is giving more cruel to contestants this season, being more cruel, I should say, to contestants this season. Now, you watch the show, you know they've been nasty, but you tell us what you think. And is Martha Stewart ready to spend a small fortune in South Beach? Details in tonight's Scene on the Scene. And no more waiting in waiting rooms. Doctors making house calls again. We'll have more on this story coming up. Closed captioning. Brought to you in part by Ashley Furniture Home Store. Now open at Sawgrass Mills, Davie, and Kendall. And 
Now, Judge Dredd's got company. Borrowed Randy's trousers. Idle Dredd is accused of cruelty. So, is it hilarious or hostile? Uh, did those bad singers deserve to be ridiculed? It's kind of bad. Is it all in the name of entertainment? What do you think? Our Idol Insider, Louis Geary, live in the Plex with more. We talked about it, Lou. They're pretty mean the other day, especially I, with those two guys. I think people are forgetting, Belkis, how mean Simon has been in past seasons. I mean, he's always been mean. They don't call him Judge Dredd for nothing. But some critics say this season, Idol's crossed the line. Don't you wish your girlfriend was a freak like me, <laughs> don't you? <laughs> Uh, no. He's always been Judge Nasty, but is Simon Cowell going too far, even for Simon? You could lie in a bath with your mouth open and you still <laughs> wouldn't sing. It. But it's true! Stop it! <laughs> Simon's harsh Stop diss it. reduced this 23-year-old mother to tears. And did you notice Randy's laugh? The dog, also in the dog pound, critics say he's been way too mean this season. You shouldn't be a vocal teacher. I wouldn't take vocal lessons from you. I wouldn't tell anybody to take vocal lessons from you coming in singing like that. Wow. Has it gotten too mean? Have the judges crossed the line? This season, so far, you seem tougher to me. USA Today calling the show needlessly cruel. People who go on American Idol do know that it's for entertainment value, but in the long run, they don't realize that it could really damage their self-esteem. And you look like one of those creatures that live in the jungle with those massive eyes. Simon really catching cool. flag for dissing 23-year-old Kenneth nice. Briggs, who Simon compared to a primate. He Turns out that. Kenneth okay. suffers from a rare disorder that makes his eyes bulge out. Simon can kiss my because I do not look like a monkey. And that's not all. Check out what he said about 20-year-old Jonathan James. Have you borrowed Randy's trousers? <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, nice one, Simon. Jonathan happens to be autistic. It made me upset, yeah. But both Idol rejects getting the last laugh appearing on the Jimmy Kimmel Show, working their 15 minutes of fame to try and land a record deal. Raindrops are falling on my head. Sound familiar? Keep face, keep face, I go crazy. Season three's ultimate reject, William Hung, worked his 15 minutes to become an overnight sensation, even releasing his own CD after getting dissed by Simon. And then there were the triplets from season four, who Simon said were too fluffy for fame. Oh. You all look like three overweight Jessica Simpsons, and oh, that's the truth. Come but on. Truth is, love them or hate them, Simon has always been Simon and will always be Simon. That's why people watch the show. Even a former idol reject comes to his defense. I feel the earth move, fall on my feet. I feel the sky come falling down. One of the worst I've ever heard in my life. I don't have much pity or compassion for these people to go on there. You have to be able to take it, no matter what they dish at you. I need your love. All right, you can catch the mean judges yourself when Idol hits Memphis tomorrow night, showtime, 8 p.m. right here on 7 in the Plex, Louis Aguirre, 7 News 19. Time now for the buzz tonight. Probation for Paris, and it's just what the judge ordered. The hotel era sentenced to three years probation after pleading no contest to alcohol-related reckless driving. All this stemming from the <coughs> September arrest in Hollywood. Hilton also has to pay a $390 fine and attend an alcohol education program. Cell phone slinging supermodel Miami Campbell is reportedly back to her hissy fit throwing ways. Campbell allegedly lashed out at a cameraman at a party in Brazil demanding his film. She and her posse surrounding him until the guy handed it over. While in Brazil, spirit guide to help manage her anger. Clearly, she needs more than one session. Yeah, <laughs> spirit guide. I'm thinking, oh, well, never mind. Still ahead here from the night team is Martha Stewart looking for digs in South Florida. That and so much more. It's tonight's Scene on the Scene. And guess what? House calls are back. Doctors that come to you. More on that story coming up. All right, we also are keeping an eye on some cold air. We may have to wait a few days before it gets here, but we're looking at lows in the mid-50s. The entire forecast will come back. All right, Phil, my name is Steve. Coming up in sports, without Shaq, without Wade, the Heat get off to a great start against the Knicks tonight, but you know it's not how you start, it's how you finish. And Finn's GM, Randy Mueller, he was given all the power, but he might not be using it with the Dolphins. The explanation ahead in seven sports. Tomorrow on 7 News, first at 10. 
I'm Carmel Cafiro. This man was busted and beaten after police came to investigate a complaint that he was playing his stereo too loud. It wasn't even a crime. This businessman was also arrested after a noise complaint and after an officer went into his house and turned off the music. There was no legal underlying basis to go ahead and arrest my client. It's this week's Carmel on the Case, tomorrow, only on 7 News, first at 10. stars taken to the green in the Caribbean. And is Martha Stewart ready to call South Florida home? <coughs> in Touch Weekly's Michael Cohen with the tales in tonight's Scene on the Scene. Martha Stewart, who I hear is being honored at the upcoming South Beach Wine and Food Festival, may be calling South Florida home. I hear she's possibly whipping up $3 million for an oceanfront condo here in South Beach. Stewart, who friends say is enjoying every minute of her continued success, believes that the condo's panoramic ocean and city views will be the perfect backdrop for any event. Now that's a good thing. Actress Scarlett Johansson apparently took a time out here in Miami from battling rumors that she caused a split of Cameron Diaz and Justin Timberlake. A source of mine who saw Johansson at MIA airport said the normally sexy clad star was wearing bulky sweats and didn't even flash a smile. And now for some quick picks of who's been seen around town. Actress Mina Savari sneaking in a backstage kiss from her boyfriend just minutes before strutting down the Alice Plus Olivier fashion show at the Shore Club. Jon Stewart passing the press line at the South Beach Comedy Festival for a stage side performance by Naked Trucker and T-Bones at Social Miami. Rocker David Navarro and Blonde Gal Pals singing with the windows down while cruising South Beach in a stylish Range Rover. From new views to relationship blues and all the gossip in between, I'm In Touch Weekly's Michael Cohen for Scene on the Scene. Now, time for seven weather with Chief Meteorologist Phil Barrow. It was a warm one. <clears throat> this is how, excuse me, this is how day shaped up all across South Florida. 82 for high in Key West, 83 in Fort Lauderdale, Miami. Also, 83 and no rain in the rain gauge. As we take a look at current conditions, 74 right now in Fort Lauderdale, the same in Miami and Kailia. The cool spot Homestead coming in with 70 degrees. But take a look at the moisture. It is muggy outside. The relative humidity in Homestead, 100%, 90% in Kendall, in the 80% range just about every place else. Pompano Beach just under the 80% mark. But the wind is coming in now out of the south-southwest. Even though it is very light, it is still pushing in a little bit of moisture over Miami-Dade and Broward counties. The heaviest of the activity right now is basically over Fort Lauderdale. This activity, which starts all the way back in Pembroke Pines and Davie, south of 595, is starting to make its way out into the Atlantic. And hopefully after this exits the area, we should be in for a relatively dry evening. The rest of the southeast in the 70s from Lake Okeechobee on down. Most of the cold air is over Jacksonville, Atlanta, and Memphis. And that cold air is trying to make its way into South Florida. Here's the leading edge of the front. Now, by tomorrow, the front should basically start to slip on south. We're still in for a warm evening. And then tomorrow morning, it should stall right over South Florida. We're still going to be on the warm side with highs in the low 80s. And then by the middle of the week, the front tries to come back up again, and it's going to bring us a better chance of rain. But see this blue line right here? That is the next front, the stronger front, which hopefully will cool us down towards the end of the week. Here's the marine forecast. Seas of one to two feet, building all the way up to four feet in the Gulf Stream waters. Now for tonight, partly cloudy. There is a chance of some fog during the overnight hours. Lows in the 60s by tomorrow. Partly to mostly cloudy skies with a few showers. Still warm out there. And here's your extended outlook. The second front comes through on Thursday. And then hopefully Friday and Saturday, lows in the mid-50s. And that's Here's 7 on 7 forecast. All right, Phil, thanks. Well, SunPass drivers will soon be able to enjoy yet another perk. It means nothing but open roads on Florida's Turnpike. Construction beginning today in northwest Miami-Dade to convert the toll plaza into the first so-called open road tolling plaza. This means SunPass owners can just keep on cruising while cash cars will have to pull off the Turnpike to, play, to pay. The plan is underway to convert all of the highway's toll 
closets. Said, said it before, say it again. If you don't have one, get one. It's like the microwave, the cell phone. Get with the program. Had you ever live without it, you'll, you'll just ask yourself. You may have a point. Coming up in a couple of minutes, tired of waiting at the doctor's office. Well, how about this? Believe it or not, some physicians will come to you. The return of the house call just ahead. Later in sports, one of football's top coaches makes a big decision on the future of his career. Seven sports, Dave. I'm going to tell you who. Well, you can see who. Well, if you've ever waited in a doctor's office, you know why we are called patients. But for some people with busy lives, the long wait is finally over. There's now a new service where doctors are once again making house calls. We've all done it, sat in a waiting room, watching the minutes, and even hours tick by before we ever see a doctor. That's probably the worst experience I've had. Waiting, uh, sitting in a waiting room for two or three hours with uh, very sick kids. Something Monica Moonshan dreaded when both of her kids got sick recently. They've been having a very persistent cough, which gets worse at night. I don't like going to the doctor's office. Instead of dragging them to the doctor or emergency room, Monica decided to call my home doctor. Hi, I'm Hi. Dr. Hayut from my home doctor. It's a new service in Miami-Dade and Broward counties where the doctor comes to you within an hour of getting the call. 24 hours a day, uh, seven days a week. So uh, you can call us in the middle of the night, early in the morning. Very good. Right now there are seven board certified doctors on staff specializing in internal medicine, pediatrics, and emergency. They do a full exam. That's a busy heart here. And even prescribe medication. If you're not well in 48 hours, okay. they'll come Why back for free. Yes. A dream come true. You you have your kids sick. You don't have to um, rearrange your schedule or anything, and you don't drive anywhere. We strive to bring one-on-one uh, -on -one personal medical attention, whether in the home, in the office, or the hotel room. Attorney Johnny Panero called the new service when he felt ill but couldn't get away from work. The best part of calling my home doc was not having to leave my office and getting the treatment I needed in a timely fashion. Docs made the office call within an hour, giving Johnny plenty of time to get back to his clients. Okay, guys. Well, so, Monica's kids were able to get at home TLC. Saw my ear, heard my heart, saw my nose, saw my temperature. Most insurance companies are reimbursing 30 to 80 percent of these visits, but HMOs are not covering them. Uh, my home doctor visits average about $350. Well, still ahead from the night team, the Heat go shorthanded tonight against the Knicks. As Wade and Shaq both sit, we're going to see how they fared against the Knicks in sports. Serena Williams, all but forgotten lately, is making a big run down under. Steve Shapiro, straight ahead. Log on. Tune in. And get connected. To WSBN.com. See more video. See more stories. With 7 News on the net. And get your customized weather and traffic updates. The reporting power of 7 is on WSBN.com. Want to win Super Bowl tickets? Enter the Duck Fest Derby on Fort Lauderdale's New River. Benefiting kids in distress. For details, visit WSBN.com. Time for seven sports with Steve Shapiro. The Heat woefully shorthanded tonight against the Knicks, and the last time they played each other, the Knicks beat the Heat by 24. No Shaq, no Wade. Wade's got a sprained ankle, and wouldn't you know, the Heat get off to their best start in franchise history. Williams layup, Jason Capono three-pointer. Udonis Haslam here. The Heat start 29 to three. They scored 40 in the first quarter. They led by 28. Gary Payton inside, that's Darrell Wright. But the Heat lead was down to 15 at the break. The Knicks sneak back in. Ronaldo Bachman, the Heat lead down to 13. The Knicks cut the lead to six. Eddie Curry gets the loose ball. It's a six-point game. But Jason Williams stops the bleeding. He's shooting from the living room. Back-to-back -back threes. Oh, my. Without Shaq, without Wade, the Heat beat the Knicks by 18, 101-83. The coach had it planned all the way. I thought it was brilliant coaching. I thought it was a masterful decision. It's exactly what I said to start the game. And, you know, I said to them, how coachable are you? And they performed flawlessly. 
we just play freely. You know, when we play loose like that and don't think about it and don't come down and thinking about plays and thinking about other things, everybody plays really well. Heat President Pat Riley taking Robert Height's arrest for DUI extremely seriously. Riley told Height to stay away from the team for a while. He's back! First game back for Denver star Carmelo Anthony suspended 15 games for fighting against the Knicks. Denver played Memphis. This is Iverson to Anthony for the easy two. First time these two play together, and the coach is liking what he sees. Carmelo plays angry. Exclamation point. They're still playing. The Nuggets lead by 12 in the third quarter. Finn's offensive coordinator, Mike Malarkey, will be back with the team next season, but perhaps not as coordinator. New head coach Cam Cameron will call the plays. General manager Randy Mueller at the Senior Bowl scouting for the Dolphins, but the Dolphins today grant Mueller permission to talk to Tennessee about becoming the Titans general manager. This comes just three days after the Dolphins gave personnel power back to Mueller. What's that all about? The Gators' Chris Leak among 100 seniors working out for the scouts at the Senior Bowl. That's Gators receiver Dallas Baker. A couple of canes there, too. Defensive lineman Kareem Brown and linebacker Brandon Merry Merriweather. It's an interesting process. You know, it's my first time going through it. Uh, but it's all for the best, you know. Um, these people pay a lot of money, and they want to see the best people, and we're here, so we got to perform. Being out here with all the other college elite players, you know, it's supposed to be the best players in the nation, so... You know, it's fun to actually be out here and, and actually compete with you guys. Bill Parcells is done coaching, says he's retired. Parcells leaves the Cowboys with one year and $5 million left on his contract. Brian Urlacher and the Chicago Bears are the NFC champions. They beat New Orleans 39-14. The Bears are angry with Saints rookie Reggie Bush. On this catch and run, Bush taunts Urlacher. He points at him. And after the touchdown, he flips himself into the end zone. Then when he gets in there, he does a little dance. Our friend and former Dolphin Wale Agunlia didn't like that. That totally pissed me off. You know, I mean, you know, you're a rookie in this league, and, and you know, you had a good play. You know, he's a hell of a player. He's going to be a great player in this league for some time. But let's go and run in there and do your little dance when you get in there. But to turn around and taunt, taunt Brian, taunt basically this whole team, I think it was a slap in the face, and uh, I'm glad we responded. I'm sure he wished they'd win the game instead of be pointing at me. He's got a point. Ladies' quarters in Australia. Rough start for Serena Williams against Shahir Peer. Serena in the far court. These two look like a fruit cup, don't they? Serena loses the first set. Pear with the winner. Name is Pear. We switch in, second set. Serena finds her game on the run, and she booms a backhand winner. Where they're tied one set each, and actually they're still playing. They're tied in the third set, 4-4. Sharapova also won today. James Blake, the American, lost to Fernando Gonzalez. That's it. Let's go back to Craig and Belkis. Thanks, Steve. Lots more still ahead here tonight from the Plex. Tom Haynes in the Plex with a preview of what's coming up for us on 7 News at 11. Tom? Belkis and Craig, the days of rising rates for wind insurance are over, at least for now. But your rate relief may not be as much as your neighbor's. We're going to break it all down for you. Plus, looking to head out on an island adventure or south of the border, the rules of travel are changing. Plus, a hidden hive buzzing with activity and exterminators try a new way to fight this insect invasion. Those stories and so much more are headed your way in just about five minutes on 7 News at 11. 7 Sports, brought to you in part by Palmetto Ford. Plumbers and electricians looking for a van or truck? Palmetto Ford. We know trucks. 305-592-FORD. Well, that does it for us first at 10. Chap, chap. I'm Balkis Nurei. I'm Craig Stevens. Stay tuned. The news continues. 7 News, brought to you by your South Florida Ford dealers. Just ahead on 7 News at 11, rising rates finally coming down. But some will get more rate relief than others. We'll explain live. A violent crime going down outside a South Florida restaurant, and you saw the critical clue first on 7. A computer crime caught on camera. The suspects caught by police. As the president prepares his State of the Union, terrorists step up attacks in Iraq. A winter storm sends a ship on its side, cargo overboard, and oil into the sea. The bees are back and get 
getting them to buzz off requires a new tactic. The Colts and Bears headed to Miami. Now it's time to get your gear on. 7 News at 11 is on now. Live from the news station, this is 7 News at 11.